Hello everybody and welcome to this new video presentation from ECG exercises, the ECG exercise number 23. I hope you will enjoy this video and join me in my future video presentations. The today's ECG belongs to a 45 year old woman with ICD who was admitted to our hospital because of recurrent ventricular fibrillation and ICD shocks for emergency treatment. In past medical history, the coronary angiography was normal and echocardiography showed normal RV and LV sizes and function. In the next, next picture, we will see her ECG, the ECG in sinus rhythm and frequent premature ventricular complexes, PVCs with negative concordance, superior axis and positive one, most compatible with ECGs from right ventricle in the region of the moderator band. And as you can see in this patient, these PVCs uh, created recurrent ventricular fibrillation. So the most important thing is when we have such a patient, it might be an idiopathic, for example, PVC, from moderator band leading to ventricular fibrillation but we have to think about a genetic background which uh, creates this kind of arrhythmia or ventricular fibrillation and this was exactly the case in this patient actually this patient has a known pathogenic nonsense, nonsense mutation in the phospholamban gene that uh, leads to a premature stop codon, uh, so-called L39X mutation. As you can see here, there is the pathogenic likelihood of this mutation is two star from four. It means these mutation have different kind of clinical presentation and in some cases the presentation might be mild and in some cases the presentation might be even more severe. So looking back to a calcium hemostasis in the myocardial cell, as you can see here, we have the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The release of the calcium is regulated through the rhinodin receptor and the reuptake of the calcium is regulated with, uh, through the circa 2A pump and phospholamban function is very important. So if we have some mutation which leads to decrease level of phospholamban protein or decreased function of this protein, we will have some increased intracellular calcium and therefore uh, attend um, a likelihood we have uh, a possibility of different kind of cardiac arrhythmia and different kind of phenotypic presentation. So in, in patients who has such a mutation in phospholamban gene, we have a range of different kind of uh, presentations. The most important presentation is dilated cardiomyopathy with ventricular arrhythmia. There are some rare cases of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy related to this mutation and in very rare cases, we like in our patient, we have normal cardiac size and function, but uh, frequent PVC, which leads to ventricular fibrillation. During the hospital stay, the patient received uh, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, and after that catheter ablation of PVC, the number of uh, ventricular fibrillation episodes decreased dramatically, but still ex uh, during the hospital stay, um, she experienced different kind of PVC and ventricular fibrillation. So besides from medical therapy, we performed the uh, thoracoscopic bilateral surgical sympathectomy and in combination of ablation sympathectomy and medical therapy with amiodarone mexilatine and verapamil, the patient remained stable, ECMO was explanted, she was extubated and after a rehabilitation course she was discharged from the hospital in good condition and she has no further arrhythmia in the past seven months. 
Right now, she's uh, on the transplantation list because as we know, the mutation exists and it's just a matter of time, probably before she gets another episode of Electric Store. Once again, I would like to thank you for your attention and I hope to have you here in my future video presentations. Thank you very much.